Mexico legend's name is among boxing's all-time greats. Albuquerque's Johnny Tapia was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame on Sunday. Tapia was a five-time world champion, and his induction comes nearly five years after his death. Tapia won 59 fights in his career, losing just five. Action 7 News spoke exclusively with his widow, who says Johnny was an important person to many New Mexicans. Facebook, people every day message me of how positive Johnny was and what a great person, you know, that he inspired them for whatever reason. It could have been a five-minute meeting. It could have been an hour talk. Well, Tapia was inducted alongside fellow boxing legends Evander Holyfield and Marco Antonio Barrera. Well, Dennis Rodman is now in North Korea for the fifth time in the past five years. And as ABC's Maggie Ruley shows us, once again, he's drawing criticism for palling around with the country's controversial leader. The Department of State has secured the release of Otto Warmbier from North Korea. After 17 months, the former University of Virginia student from suburban Cincinnati is on his way back home. Otto Warmbier was serving a 15-year prison sentence with hard labor after tearfully confessing in March 2016 to trying to steal a political poster from his hotel. Shortly after the trial, North Korea says Warmbier fell into a coma. The family says they only learned of his condition this week. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson confirms that President Trump asked the State Department to secure his release and adds that they're continuing to discuss options for the three other Americans detained in North Korea. Warmbier's release comes as just hours earlier, Dennis Rodman touched down in the Hermit Kingdom. I'm just here to um, come see some friends and uh, have a good time. In this newly released YouTube video, Rodman's publicist says the former NBA star is in the rare position of being friends with both President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. He is the only man to have a relationship and be friends with both people. Rodman was a cast member on two seasons of Trump's Celebrity Apprentice. And he's visited North Korea four times since 2013. Rodman says his goal is to create a dialogue between the two nations. It's all about doing one thing, it's all about peace. While the timing of Rodman's visit and Warm Beer's release is interesting, officials say there is absolutely nothing to suggest that these two events are related. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. We want to help end the need for rescues like this, where crews actually rappel down into flowing arroyos to pull out those stuck in the rushing water. Today, the U.S. Forest Service showed us what they go through each year to train crews on grabbing drowning victims. The number one thing they remind you to do, stay away from the ditches and wet roads in the first place. You never know what's under that water. How deep is it? How fast is it moving? You only need six inches of water to push you over and carry you away. They also want you to be prepared before monsoon season kicks into full gear. Create a go bag with necessities so you're ready to leave if your home floods. We have breaking news right now. Crews are on the scene of four fires along Interstate 40 just west of Klein's Corners. We're told the wind is making it difficult to get it under control right now. One of our viewers shared this photo of the smoke on our You Local page. Witnesses told police someone was playing with fireworks that looked like Roman candles shooting them out of their car. Well, take a look at this map. The Navajo Nation is really big, covering northeast Arizona and parts of western New Mexico. Now, U.S. Senators are working to improve the Amber Alert system in this large area. Now, this comes after the death of 11-year-old Ashlyn Mike in 2016. Police say a man kidnapped and killed her near Shiprock. An Amber Alert did not go out for her disappearance until the next day. A Senate committee just approved a bill to expand the Amber Alert system and give funding to tribes. The bill now moves to the full Senate. Well, the jury in the Bill Cosby sexual assault trial is still talking. ABC's Elizabeth Hurt reports on their first full day of deliberations. Jurors back in court for the first full day of deliberations. This after Bill Cosby's defense called just one witness and took just six minutes to make its case on Monday. Cosby did not take the stand. There's no reward in that situation, especially somebody at his age and given the, the amount of time and all of the problems that uh, could be brought up by a cross-examination of him. But on the last day of the trial, his wife Camille was in court for the first time, smiling outside, but sitting inside, showing no emotion. As the defense argued, while Cosby was a cheater, he was not a criminal, that only angels are in heaven. Mr. Cosby is doing good, his spirits are up, he's confident. 
Across the room, the woman at the heart of this trial, Andrea Constant, who accused Cosby of drugging and sexually assaulting her in 2004. Then the prosecutor told jurors Cosby's own words incriminate him, referring to a deposition from 2005 where he admitted to obtaining quaaludes prior to sexual encounters with women, though he does not say in the deposition that he gave women drugs without their knowledge. The DA maintained that any inconsistencies in Constance's statements were because she spent more time trying to forget what happened rather than trying to remember. If convicted, the DA's office says they will ask to have Cosby put in jail immediately and have Cosby register as a sex offender. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Norristown, Pennsylvania. Getting up close and personal with cops can be intimidating for some, especially children, and that's why the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office created Camp Triumph. It's a week where kids get to meet with law enforcement from all over the state to learn exactly what they do. I think sometimes some of the officers and deputies have more fun than the kiddos, but uh, it's great to see the kids have fun, be themselves, and interact with us on a different level. As part of the four-day camp, the kids fish, swim, bowl, go to the zoo, and even do rock wall climbing with New Mexico State Police, the DEA, and the National Guard. Yeah, and I think those relationships are going to stick with them as they get older, and it's a great thing for them to have. Especially the young kids. They're yeah. fascinated with the fire trucks and the they police it, and right? how they <laughs> save people and help people. So, very yeah. cool program. Well, next on 7, Doughboy is a popular character you've seen on commercials, but his creators are upset with a local bakery. Plus, Dr. Barry Ramo says there are some of us who ignore the symptoms for a heart attack, which you should look for in tonight's Health Beat. And coming up all new on Action 7 News Live at 6, the windy season is here. And for some of you, that's, that means home repairs. We'll show you what happened to this umbrella at 6. You're watching KOAT Action 7 News live at 5. An Albuquerque bakery has been told to change its name. The small business was told it's too similar to a famous Doughboy. Action 7 News reporter Kay Demush is live for us outside Doughboy's Bake Shop with what the business owners plan to do next. Just two weeks after opening, Doughboy's Bake Shop says they got a letter from the owners from the company that owns Pillsbury Dough Brand. When Claudia and Mike Millage opened their business, Doughboy's Bake Shop, they do things the old school way. They never thought this Pillsbury Doughboy would come after them. We got a letter from General Mills stating that our name was too close to their trademark Pillsbury Doughboy and said that we would dilute their brand. Is that good? The couple says the name Doughboy has a deeper meaning to them. My father owned a bakery in Socorro about 30, 35 years ago and they called him the little doughboy. The couple says General Mills first sent them a letter in January, just weeks after they opened, asking them to change the name of their store. Since then, they say they received phone calls and other letters from General Mills, including a cease and desist. Picking on the little guy isn't always, isn't any good. A statement from a spokesperson from General Mills says, we worked closely with the bakery owners to reach a mutual acceptable agreement to resolve the misuse of our trademark. A name change could 